This video is going to demonstrate how to create a Teach Pendant program using the uh, FANUC robot and the FANUC Teach Pendant uh, using the RoboGuide software and how to uh, create points, motion instructions within the program and execute that program. So what we're going to do here is we're going to um, go to select. Okay, now notice, uh, first of all, I do have the teach pendant turned on and I'm going to go to select and under select, we have uh, several different options on our soft keys. F2 is labeled create. So I'm going to press F2 to create a new program. Now, the way uh, this works, you can label your programs and we really don't want to label it starting with PRG or MAN. These are like beginning names, but these are really poor names. Your program can only be eight characters. And so if you select one of these choices here, program, main, sub, or test, you're left with uh, five, four to five uh, characters for your program name. So I recommend you don't do that. So we want to arrow down and uh, use uppercase letters. So let's just say that uh, I wanted to call this program the first program. So uh, if you look, F1 does letters A through F. So I'm going to go to first. So I'm going to press the F or press the F1 key labeled A through F until I get an F. If you miss it and you go one too many, then you just have to press it again. So you just, uh, we're going to go to F. Now I need to go over, so I'm going to use the arrow key to go over to the right, and then I want first, so I go to I. Now, uh, you notice like G through L are these letters. The next letter I need is an R, so I could use the arrow key, but because I can, the next letter I need isn't F2, but it's F3, I could actually just press F3 and it'll skip ahead, so it might save just a little bit there. Uh, instead of using an arrow, but I'm going to first. Now I need an S, so I'll press F4. But see, now I need a T. And so if I'm going to call this first, I need to, um, I'm going to go to first, go to the S, and then I definitely need to use the right arrow key here to go one more and put in a T. All right. And you can use an underscore, but um, other than that, you you know you need you can use letters. If you wanted to call this like if you wanted to number this, you could actually come down in here and just like type in a number. All right, there is the backspace key to back up. Uh, like I say, you could put like a underscore here, and then we could do like, oops, hit the wrong button there. So I do do it again. Create. Come down to upper, and I'm going to do first F, oops, past the I, back to the I, um, F I R, go to the R, S, right arrow, T, and then I'm going to put in an underscore. Uh, and then I'm just going to call it uh, PG for program, I guess. P and then G for program. So not a great name for a program, but uh, just to demonstrate that. And then we can then um, hit enter and go to end. Okay, now when you get down to the end, you have two choices. Number one, you could just go directly to editing the program and adding in commands or motion instructions, or you can go to details. So I'm going to go over the details here. So I'm going to press F2, uh, and these are the details. So here's your program name. If you decide you want to change your program name, just hit enter, and you can come over here and you can then edit the name of the program. Uh, they have uh, hit previous to get out of there if you don't want to save your changes or hit enter to save your changes if you had made any. Uh, the second option here is the uh, subtype. And one of the things you're going to see a lot is this 
F4 choice. So you select that for choice and your choices are uh, no special type, um, which means it's just an ordinary teach benefit program or a macro or a conditional program. So macro programs, um, the biggest advantage of macro programs is they allow us to tie them to the special predefined user keys we talked about in the teach pendant chapter that these seven keys from position here uh, position io status setup move and then tool one and tool two these seven keys we can tie programs to these and the way we do that is we basically will have to declare them as a macro there's also a special screen that you can uh, add macros to uh, called the manual functions screen. So if we were to go to a menu, I'm not gonna do it just a second here, but if we went to menu and selected manual functions, that would be where programs that were declared as macros could also show up. All right, uh, we can add a, an extra comment uh, hit previous to get out of that. Um, we can add a comment to the program to give it a more of a description. Now, in comments, we're allowed things like spaces and special characters like commas or semicolons or things like that. So for the program name, again, the program name is limited to eight characters and it can have numbers in it, but it really shouldn't start with a number. Um, and it can have an underscore in it, but other than that, it can't have a space. Spaces are special characters, okay? It can't have um, a, you know, per percent sign or something like that. Those are all special characters that are not allowed in a program name, but they are valid in comments. All right, so, uh, and then we can go on down and we have what we call the group mask. Now the group mask tells it which group. We've already discussed that controllers can control, depending on the type of controller, a R30IA controller can handle up to 40 different axes, but those axes have to be separated into eight motion groups. So this is where we define which motion group that this program is gonna be moving, all right? So you can have a program that's gonna uh, move uh, ax axes in the first group or in the second group up to, you know, your, your eighth group. And remember, you can have a maximum of nine axes in a group. And your first six axes of your standard articulated robot are in group one. And so that's why there's a one here for group one. Now, if I was going to create a program that wasn't going to move any axes at all, I could come over here and press five and put a star there. Now this would be a program that um, will not move the robot at all, but it could enable IO. So I could create like a macro program to open or shut the gripper, which we will do when we get to the IO section. And we don't want it to actually move the robot, but simply activate inputs or outputs, then we could, uh, um, mark that to a star there and we can make it a macro and then we could tie it to tool one or tool two so when you press this it would open or shut a gripper or something along those lines but it wouldn't actually move the robot arm but if you want the robot arm to move you must put a one here in the group mask okay you can also uh mark the program as uh right protected so that you can't make changes to it. Now, obviously we just created this program, so I definitely want to make changes to it. Otherwise it's a useless null program. So I'm not going to turn right protect on. All right. Um, and then uh, we can tell it to ignore pauses under certain conditions. Then it would ignore um, pause instructions from certain tasks. And um, the stack size, normally you don't really have to change a stack size, but it's kind of like the base size that the program's gonna be. All right, so um, once you've selected all that, you can press F1 to end, and now you're in the program. Notice up here, 
above the black line there, it says first underscore program. This is telling us this is the program that we're currently in. We're currently on line zero because there are no lines in the program. All right. And but there is always one line in the program, which is the end line. So if you see at the right below the 100 percent, it says one slash one. And that one slash one means there's one line and, and it's actually counting the end line. All right, so you can see the robot here is sitting above this uh, blue box. And so if I, uh, the first thing we wanna do though, uh, is we're gonna create a program that's gonna move the robot, then we should go to uh, instruction. So if you see here by touch up, there's the, the greater than sign, which means that if we press the next button, we get some different options. And so the very first option we see F1 is labeled instruction. Now, sometimes I, I like to think that that means insert. It does not mean insert. If you select this instruction line and you already, you're on a line that already contains an instruction, you will overwrite the current instruction. It will be lost, okay? There is an undo we'll talk about later, but there's only one undo. Uh, but uh, the INST does not mean insert, it means instruction. And so the first thing I recommend that we do uh, for any program is what we kind of talked about in frames. We want to, lay, we want to define what frames this program is going to use at the top of the program. And if our program is going to use multiple frames, then later on we'll have to change that. But uh, it's always a good idea to start your program by setting your frame. So uh, notice the menu options here. Eight means go to the next page. So I'm going to select eight. And you see under four, it says offset and frames. So I'm going to select four. And I'm going to choose number two and set my user frame. So I'm gonna set my user frame and notice here the choices are to a register value or to a constant. And I'm gonna set it just to a constant. So I'm gonna say, put a constant there. Now I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna say, use user frame zero, which if you remember from the frames lecture, user frame zero is the world frame. Right, so this is the robot's home world definition of, of where things are in the world. So for this program here, I'm just gonna use the world frame because I don't have any other ones taught currently. And I'm also gonna set my tool frame. So now notice the, this, the end line is highlighted. So if the end line is highlighted, you're gonna be inserting at the end of the program. But if I was to come back up here to the one and I was uh, selected something. So let's say I'm gonna go back here, I'm gonna go eight to next page and then I'm gonna go to four for frames and I'm now I'm gonna choose the U tool num. Notice that it just overwrote what I had, okay? Because again, the uh, and INST means instruction but it's gonna overwrite any instruction on that line that you're currently on. So I got util num and then util num is gonna be one, but now I gotta go back and re-add my user frame. So four for frames and I'm gonna go uh, util num, okay? Or you frame num, I, um, let's see, two. You frame num. And I'm again, I'm going to select that to be a constant. So this is kind of, you know, you can, it defaults to a register value. We haven't talked about registers in very much detail yet, but it defaults to a register. So if you just want to force it to a fixed value, you got to arrow down to a constant, hit enter. Now you can punch in that number. So you, user frame is going to be the world frame, which is user frame zero. The tool frame, tool frame start counting at one, so that it's gonna to be tool frame one. And you can see I've got my uh, green tool center point here at the tip of my pointer, so that's that's my tool. So again, you know, it's not 100% required that you start a program with these uh, 
instructions, but I feel it's a good idea to do so. All right, so now once we do that, I'm gonna come back, you see the greater than, I hit next, and I get back to a point. So I'm gonna save a point. Now before I save my point, I'm gonna jog the robot to one corner of my cube here. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna jog the robot. Now notice my percentage is 100%. Okay, and this software, it loves to jump up to 100%. So I'm gonna just bounce this down so it moves kind of slow. And I'm in world jogging, I'm jogging in the world frame. So I'm gonna go minus Y So I'm going to go minus Y, and it's jogging pretty fast there, so I'm going to slow it down even more. And uh, I'm going to zoom in. Okay, it definitely helps to kind of zoom in so you can get to that point that you want. And maybe even slow down a little bit more here. Okay, and I'm going to go down a little bit. Oops, down too far, I'm going too fast still. Okay, if that would have been a real robot, I would have crashed into my table. All right, so you wanna make sure that you zoom in, because I wanna get to this corner. So we need to be as precise as possible. And we need to look at it from different angles. And we need to look at it from different angles. So see, as I rotate this around, it's like, boy, I thought I was there, but I'm not, okay, when I'm looking at it from a different angle. So make use of your multiple views. And we need to get that in there, okay? So you might want, you know, have an X view and a Y view sort of thing going on so that you can see where you're at here. And again, slow it down a little bit if you need to. And so I'm gonna jog a little bit of plus Y. All right, so that looks pretty close, maybe just a little bit more. Slow this down. Okay, so I'm right along this edge. Okay, so I'm right along this edge and now I wanna get down to this corner here. I'm gonna come down to the corner. And then I'm gonna go straight down to get right there to the tip. Okay, so again, as, as the, the more you zoom in, you know, the more accurate you can be. So you want to, you want, you should be within about two to three millimeters of the actual value. Now, what is the actual value? Well, remember, if we double click on the fixture, we can see the settings of the fixture. So we know that this fixture is 200 in the X, 200 in the Y, and 200 in the Z. So if we uh, look at our position, right we see that y is minus 99 okay well it's 200 but it's dead center so it's minus 100 to plus 100 so i'm just only off by about 0.1 millimeter in the y okay and the x is 400 millimeters out to the center of this thing so the the spot you see the the xyz in red there that's to the center, so the X is 400 millimeters to that uh, from the robot, from the world position of the robot, 
to the center of this block, but the block is 200 millimeters. So subtract 100 half of that. And so we're at 399.9. So again, I'm about 0.1 millimeter in both the X and the Y position there. So I'm very, very close to that corner. So now I'm going to come over here. I'm going to press edit. Remember, pressing edit at any time will take you to the current program that you're working on and editing. And so it takes me there. And now I'm going to press shift and press F1 to record my motion instruction. So I've captured my motion instruction here, which is a joint movement um, to point one. So notice it labels down here in the software, it labels that as point one, which is that corner of my box, okay? And so now I can jog in the X direction, okay? So I can jog in the X direction plus X, and again, you can kind of watch it if you watch your position. So we need to go 200 millimeters. So we're gonna to go to 500 in the X. And we can increase our speed a little bit. When you start getting close, slow it down. Zoom in a little bit. Okay. So you can see there I'm at 499 now in the X direction. So I'm going to go back to edit to my program and I'm going to record this point as point two. All right. And then similarly, I can jog. Now I'm going in the Y direction, so I can jog in the plus uh, Y direction. And I'm gonna go 200 millimeters. So again, we could kind of watch that. If we would go to position, we could watch that. Okay. And uh, you know, so we were at minus 100 in the Y, and we're going to go to plus 100 in the Y. And so once we get to that, we can um, once we get to that corner, we're going to record that corner right there. All right, so you see I'm at 100.8. So I'm gonna go edit and I'm gonna record that and that's gonna become 0.3. Now, notice the at symbol. The at symbol tells you that we are currently at 0.3 in the software, all right? And so now I wanna move, right? I've got this box, so it's got four corners. And right now I've done, you know, the the point one corner, which is to the 100 millimeters to the left of the robot, um, as we're facing the robot or to the robot's right. And then we had point two and we have point three. Now I could jog it to point four also, or I can come in here and I can just press F1 and notice that point three and point four are exactly the same because I'm at those points. But I want point four to be this other corner of my robot over here. And so what I can do is because I know the size of my box, I can actually come in here and go to position and I can force this to be that point. So I know that that point there is 100 in the Y but in the X, it's um, 300, right? So I subtract, I'm at 499, I subtract 200, right? And I would be at 299 or technically, it really should be 300 exactly. And I can actually just punch in that value, all right? And uh, so then we can, uh, we've done that. And so now I've got all four points of my box. 
So what I want this program to do is I want this program to go all the way around the box. So it's going to start at point one. I want this program to start at point one over here at point one and then go to point two, go to point three, go to point four and then return back to the corner it started at. Now I could jog it over there and, and create a new point called point five, but that's kind of silly. I already know point one, I've got it recorded. So what I can do is I'm gonna add, come down to end. Okay, so notice where I'm at here. I'm gonna come down to the end. I'm gonna press shift F1, which is gonna create one more point, which they label point five, which is currently point five is on top of point three because I'm, my robot arm is still on point three. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit, I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna to come to the five and I really want this to return to point one. So I'm just gonna type in point one, boom. Now I, my program starts at point one and it ends at point one. So now we can test our program. So I'm gonna come up here to the top of the program and I'm going to turn my step on. See the step button here? Step means that it's gonna go one line at a time. And now notice right now the robot is currently at point three. Okay, so this is kind of important. The robot is at point three. So when I run this, the first instruction is just to set my tool frame. The second instruction is to set my user frame. All right, remember if we press shift cord, you can see your current username or your user frame and tool frames and they're one and zero, which match what we have there. Just to kind of show you, I'm gonna go ahead and change my tool frame to two and my user frame to three, okay? So now remember, if you press shift cord, you see tool frame is two, user frame is three. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit previous here to get back to this screen and make that menu go away. And I'm going to hold down the shift key and press forward. And now notice it executed line one, which simply reset my frame. So now if I press shift cord, the tool frame is now back to frame one because I executed line one. Uh, I'll hit previous just to get rid of that. I'm gonna do shift forward and execute line two. So I've executed line two. If I do a shift cord, we can see my user frame is now set to the world frame, user frame zero. And now it's ready to execute line three. Now remember, we're currently at point three. Now notice points or instructions one and two didn't actually move the arm. All they did was change the current user frame and current tool frame settings. So it didn't actually move the arm. Now I'm at line three, this is a motion instruction and it says move to point one. So the robot arm is gonna move and if something is in its way, it's going to run through it, okay? And so when I now, if I hit shift forward, it's gonna to move to the next line. Notice it's just cutting right across here over to point one, and it's gonna to go to point one. If I press hold part way there, the robot will stop. Okay, so um, when you're running a program and the robot's moving and maybe if it's getting too close to something, you're afraid it might hit it, you can press the hold button to stop the robot from moving or simply lit up on the shift. Okay, so and then press forward to continue it on after you remove the remove the instruction or move the robot away where it's not going to hit it. So now you can see the at symbol I'm um, at point one. If I press forward, it moves through the next line of instruction, which says go to point two. All right, and so boom, now it goes to point two. And then forward again goes to point three. So what I'm doing is I'm stepping through the program. I have step turned on. 
So I'm just stepping through the program and executing one line at a time to make sure that the robot is performing what I want it to do and it's not running into anything at this speed. Now, just be warned, just because it's not running into anything at this speed doesn't mean that if I speed it up, it may not, uh, you know, it may actually, the path varies a little bit, especially when you're in joint mode, the path varies a little bit and can uh, run into an item there. All right, but so you notice here, it just ran through all of those. Now, notice the teach pendant is still on. I'm going to um, come over here though, and I'm gonna press a step and take step off and now i'm going to run forward now it jumps up because i was at the end of the program so it jumps up to the start of the program i'll press forward again and it's going to execute the entire program all right but we're in test mode the teach pendant is turned on we're in test mode our maximum speed is 250 millimeters per second but remember that my speed is currently at one percent so i'm really only running at about 2.5 millimeters per second, which is really, really slow, but this is software simulation, so it looks like it's moving much faster than that. All right, so it, it, but notice it's not moving along the yellow line. It's not moving along the straight line right there. Do you see that? Now notice, um, I'm gonna turn step back on for a minute. I'm gonna use the backward line, okay? Because we were, we're here at point one, um, we just finished line seven, so I'm at line seven. I'm going to hit backwards, and you're going to see it move back. You see it move back, but notice that it's not moving along the straight line. It's actually making a curved motion. That is because my instruction type here is joint. And what joint means is joint means make a nice, easy, flowing motion. So just like uh, with your hands, right? Normally when we move our arm to pick something up or set something down or whatever, we never move our hands in a perfectly straight line. We don't think about it, but we just don't do it. If you were to take a roller and try to run your hand straight along the edge of a roller, you'll notice that it's it's not actually a natural movement, right? Our, our hands move more in a arcing sort of motion, and that's exactly how this robot moves. So joint mo motions are nice, easy motion instructions. Um, they, they have the least wear and tear on the robot. They're the simplest for the controller to do. The problem is, is that we don't exactly know the path that the robot's going to choose to follow it. The controller knows the path, but we as the programmers don't know the path. So you just have to be aware of that. But again, if I hit forward now, I'm going to go from point four to point two and just notice that big gap, uh, that arcing movement. So instead of moving in a perfectly straight line, it's moving in this arc, arcing sort of motion. So we've run the program here, we've tested the program, and it's uh, running pretty well. Um, if we just, you know, I'm gonna speed it up here a little bit, okay? And you gotta watch because the software jumps up to 100% really, really fast, okay? I'm gonna speed it up to about 20%, and I'm going to hit forward. And again, it, I was at the end of the program, so it just jumps to the top. I hit forward one more time. It's going to run through the program. Um, press shift, and then, oh, I got step turned on. I forgot I turned step back on. I'm going to turn step off now. So the first time, you should always run through with step turned on and just move to one, one line at a time, make sure everything's okay. Then after you've done that, I'm gonna slow this down more. I'm gonna slow it down to 5%, I guess. Um, after you've, you've stepped through the program one line at a time and you're comfortable with it, you may have to do it three or four or 10 times until you're comfortable with it. 
then take step off, but you're still in teach mode. The teach pendant is still turned on. And then you um, take step off and it'll run through the program with executing each line. Okay. Then after you're comfortable with that, you want to turn the teach pendant off and run it in auto mode. Now, for the software here, you just come up to the play button up here at the top and you press play and it gives you a little warning message here, but then it'll run it through. Now, notice it automatically increased the speed to 100%. Okay, so when it, when you, when it did that, then it increased the spa speed to 100% when you, because this is auto mode. This is the cycle start button on the controller. It's the green cycle start button on the controller. And uh, actually, let me, I'm going to turn the teach pendant on. You know, remember, technically, to run in auto mode, you have to teach the teach pendant off and then turn the key switch on the controller and then press the cycle start button. Well, the thing is, in the software, it, when, as soon as I press this button, the cycle start button up here, the play button, it's actually going to automatically shut off my teach pendant for me. And then it, it also increases the speed of your robot to 100%, which is kind of dangerous. The real robot will not automatically increase the speed to 100%. It's just whatever speed you set that to. Um, so when you hit, you know, cycle start, that's the speed it will go to. But this software will automatically turn your teach pendant off and change the speed to 100% when you press this uh, auto or press this cycle start button. So watch it. It's going to go through here and it just maps through here. And uh, one thing that's kind of nice about the software, it really displays this joint movement. So you can see this trace here is not following a straight line, right? We know the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. But that doesn't mean it's the easiest motion to move. The easiest motion is actually more of an arcing motion. All right. Now, and when you look at this, it doesn't look more like an arc. It looks more like there's a straight line and another straight line and another straight line. That's just the sketching of the software. In reality, it's a smooth arc sort of movement, which we saw when we were stepping through. Go back and watch that part of the video again you see it's a, a smooth arcing motion it's not moving in in a straight line up to this point and straight line to that point it's just a nice smooth arcing motion it's just the software uh is displaying it in jagged lines okay but that's just the trace that's just trying to show you an idea of the path that the robot took okay and it does that when you run it in auto mode now, if you want to get rid of those traces, if we come over here, like you see that, that trace there showing up. If you come over here, there's something called traces. And if you click on that, that trace right there, um, actually it's, it's all the way up here under profile. So if you just come to the profile and you can delete that entire program profile, and it deletes the trace and, and all the other stuff associated with it. Okay. All right. But uh, that is how you can create a program, test the program, and then um, run the program in auto mode. Okay. Now, remember on the real robot, we would have to manually teach the teach pen, turn the teach pendant off, open up the door to the controller turn the key switch, there's the key switch on the controller that says auto or T1, switch it to auto, and then press the cycle start. And the other thing we would have to do is we're gonna have, once you turn this from on to off, you're gonna get a fault. So on the real robot, you make sure you watch your teach pennant and you may have to press the reset button a couple of times during that process. Cause as soon as you turn the teach pendant off, it goes into a fault state. And so then you got to go to the controller, turn the key switch to auto, press the reset button, 
and press auto start. And every once in a while, there might be a couple other errors or something that occur. And so you may have to look at that, look at the teach pendant, look at the message on the teach pendant and um, correct that error, press the reset button, then press cycle start again. All right, if you press the hold button while it's running in auto mode, the robot will stop. And then you can press the cycle start again. If you're still in auto mode, you never left auto mode, you can press the cycle start again, and it'll pick up where it left off. All right, if you, even when it's running in auto mode, if you press the edit button, it'll take you to this program. So anytime you press edit, it'll take you to the program that it's currently running. All right. Also remember that um, when you go up to the robot and you want to run your program, it may have already been set to run somebody else's program. So you got to go to function, press the function key, and the first option there, one, is abort all. And that will terminate the program that was running so that you can select your own program and run your own program. So don't forget to press function, abort all. You can either, that's the default, so you can either just press enter or you can press the one key. Either way, that'll do the uh, abort all. That'll terminate the program that was running before so that you can select and start running your program. All right, so that'll happen to you a lot, so be aware of that.